years is the one year kind of anniversary of the rollout. What's it like to look back over over that one year and see all the people who have signed up and are insured now for well, it's showing that 130,000 Iowans now have access to basic affordable health care who didn't before. And one of the reasons that happened is because I worked with Governor Branstead and the Iowa legislature to get a waiver so that we could expand access to health care for Iowans. There were certainly some problems with how it all started, but I think Iowans are starting to see the benefits and we can't go back to where we were before. What's the importance of not repeating? Fixing the problems, whatever they might be, and not throwing it all out. Well, I can't think of anything that illustrates the problem in Washington more than taking 50 votes to repeal the Affordable Care Act. We need to fix the problems. We need to improve the bill to make it work for Iowans. But we can't afford to go back to days when children, like my nephew, could get kicked off because of pre-existing conditions. We can't afford to go back to when women could be discriminated against in insurance pricing and insurance companies could terminate your coverage without any reason. We're seeing Iowa seniors on average saving $800 a year because we're starting to close the donut hole on prescription. Drug. So we need to keep focused on improving what needs to be fixed and moving forward to make it better for us. Is repeal at this point realistic? I don't think repeal is realistic, and yet Senator Ernst makes that her top priority in dealing with health care is repealing the Affordable Care Act. I think it's a stark difference between us in this campaign. I'm a bridge builder, not a bridge burner. I have a record to prove that, and one of the things I did was work with Terry Brown instead in the Iowa legislature to expand affordable health care to Iowans. Uh, kind of moving over to uh, part of what you guys talked about in the debate was women's right to contraception yes. and, and abortion rights and things like that. Why is it important to have that discussion still? I mean, you know, so many years after it will be made, and, um, you know, especially with things like the Hobby Lobby decision now, um, why is it important for it to be a part of this race? Well, because it matters. It matters to women in Iowa. It matters to men. These are basic access to health care decisions, and there's a clear difference between the two of us. Senator Ernst introduced legislation that would ban all abortions in Iowa. It would prevent uh, many forms of contraception. It would prevent couples who depend on in vitro fertilization from getting a chance to start a family, all because of the bill that she introduced. And this has been fact-checked as having been an accurate description of what her bill would do. It's something that's a clear difference between us and this election. I think that the government shouldn't interfere with these important health care decisions between doctors and women and all. In this race in general, there are a lot of issues that you guys are focusing on. I would like to not have one or two key issues to kind of galvanize the base and to instead have to talk about both foreign affairs and ISIS in Syria and things like abortion and, and uh, the Affordable Care Act uh, and domestic violence. Well, look, Iowa's next senator is going to face significant challenges dealing with important economic issues like raising the minimum wage, protecting Social Security and Medicare, figuring out how we stimulate job growth by investing in infrastructure and trying to rebuild our manufacturing base. But senators also have a very significant role in foreign policy, and we're seeing that with what's happening with ISIS and the need to address this growing terrorist threat and taking specific action to eliminate that threat, bring those responsible to justice or to the grave. That's an important role for Iowa's next senator and one that I take very seriously. Is this race unique in that sense and that there is such a big uh, impact of uh, foreign affairs? I don't know that this race is unique in that standpoint, but what we know is there's a lot of national attention being paid to what's going on here in Iowa. And I get that. I understand that this has an important role in the future of Iowa and the future of this country. And that's why Iowans take this race very seriously, and they need to see the clear choice that there is in this election between someone like me who will work with anyone who's got a good idea to move Iowa forward, or someone who supports a radical Tea Party agenda that's going to take us back. Do the poll numbers change the message at any point in this part of the campaign? Or 
it seems like there's a different poll every day. You can't get hung up on what poll numbers say. You have to focus on connecting with Iowa voters. They're the ones that are going to decide this election. So just this week, I've gone, I traveled from Des Moines to Council Bluffs to Sioux City to Merrill to Evansburg to Mason City and back home last night and now down to Cedar Rapids. Engaging voters, making sure they know what's at stake in this election is what we're focused on. Great, thank you.